The Fallacy of Fearlessness, The Vital Role of Fear in Life Preservation. Welcome back to Information for Life, Insights and Ideas to Navigate Your World, where we engage in thoughtful exploration of ideas that help you decipher the complexities of the world we live in. I'm your host, and in this episode, we explore a fascinating contradiction, the myth of the fearless individual and the life-saving importance of fear. The Myth of Fearlessness We often hear stories of the fearless woman or fearless man portrayed as heroic figures that stare danger in the face without flinching. They're appealing, aren't they? On the surface, they seem to embody the epitome of strength and determination, something we all aspire to. However, we rarely stop to consider how these narratives might distort our understanding of fear, painting it as a weakness when it's actually a crucial element in our survival toolkit. Fear, after all, is not a villain to be defeated, It is an evolutionary response, hardwired into our brain to ensure the survival in the face of danger. Allman, 2008. It tells us when to run, when to hide, when to fight. Responses that can mean the difference between life and death. Yet, our modern heroes are painted as devoid of fear, as if they were somehow superior for lacking this primal instinct. It is not fear that is the problem. It is how we act upon it whether or not we use our fear instead of shrinking away because of our fear. The fascination with the fearless individual, while well-intentioned, misrepresents the human experience and overlooks the importance of fear as a survival mechanism. It also places an unrealistic expectation on us to be unafraid, setting us up for failure when fear inevitably arises. The Vital Role of Fear Fear is not a failing, nor is it an enemy. It's an advisor. It guides us through life, teaching us about ourselves and our environment. Fear sharpens our senses, heightens our vigilance, and drives us to be more cautious in dangerous situations. These are vital reactions for survival, and they have been since the dawn of humanity. A study by Mobs and others, 2007, discovered that fear triggers our brain's defense circuits, leading us to adaptive behavioral responses such as fight, flight, or freezing. When we fear, our body prepares to respond to the potential threat, thus improving our chances of survival. Moreover, fear often drives us to seek help, connection, and support from others, fostering social bonds and community resilience. Court, Kulahaz, Wingfield, and McGowan, 2005. Therefore, fear not only saves lives, but also cultivates our humanity in the face of adversity. Fear is a signpost. Fear is a signpost, pointing us towards what we must confront and overcome. It's the echo in the dark alley, the rustle in the bushes, the sense of unease in an unfamiliar place. Without it, we could blindly walk into danger, unaware of the potential consequences. That's not to say we should let fear paralyze us or control our lives. It's about striking a balance, about learning to understand and interpret our fear, using it as a guide rather than a dictator. Fear is a dialogue. We need to listen to what it's telling us, understand why it's present, and decide how to act based on that information. It's not about becoming fearless, but about becoming better navigators of our fear. Remember, fear is not a sign of weakness, nor should it be dismissed in the pursuit of an unachievable and dangerous fearlessness. It's a protective mechanism. A fearless society, a dangerous illusion. The social construct of a fearless society is fundamentally flawed and potentially dangerous. If we cultivate a culture where fear is seen as weakness, we could potentially devalue the very mechanism that has kept us alive for millennia. Fear in reasonable doses serves as a functional purpose. Imagine if no one was afraid of standing at the edge of a cliff, walking into traffic, or touching a live wire. The absence of fear doesn't lead to bravery, but recklessness. Fearlessness in this sense could be the end of us. We need to start teaching that it's okay to be afraid. It's not a character flaw, it's a survival instinct. If we can shift our perception of fear from a weakness to an important part of our life toolkit, we will be better equipped to navigate the complex and often dangerous world we live in. Harnessing fear, a way forward. So, if being completely fearless is a fallacy, how do we move forward? How can we take these realizations and apply them to our daily lives? 
The first step is acknowledging and accepting our fears. Instead of suppressing or ignoring them, we need to let them come to the surface and listen to what they're telling us. Then we can decide whether our fears are warranted or irrational and devise a plan to confront or cope with them. In a study by Oxner and Gross, 2005, they found that cognitive regulation strategies, such as reappraising a fear-inducing situation, can effectively reduce fear responses. By changing how we think about a situation, we can modify our emotional responses and better manage our fears. We also need to remember that it's okay to ask for help when our fears feel overwhelming. Reaching out to others not only provides emotional support, but can also offer a different perspective on our fears, helping us better understand and cope with them. Leahy, 2001. And most importantly, we need to stop striving for an impossible ideal of fearlessness. Instead, let's aim for fear savviness, the ability to navigate, manage, and learn from our fears. Redefining bravery. Perhaps it is time to redefine bravery. Bravery is not the absence of fear, but the ability to act despite it. This form of courage allows us to face our fears, use them as motivation, and ultimately overcome them. The individual who is able to move forward while acknowledging their fears, rather than suppressing or ignoring them or running away, is the true epitome of courage. It's about taking calculated risks, being cognizant of the possible dangers, and yet choosing to move forward. That's bravery in its purest form. It's not about being fearless, but being courageous enough to face our fears and use them to our advantage. The Power of Vulnerability There is great power in vulnerability, in admitting that we are scared and reaching out to others for help. Vulnerability builds connections and fosters empathy. It allows us to be more authentic and, in turn, enables us to create stronger relationships. The vulnerability of fear also drives innovation and learning. It forces us to confront the unknown and challenges us to adapt and grow. Without fear, we may become complacent, stuck in our ways, unwilling to venture into the unknown and discover new possibilities. Encouraging Fear Literacy We need to foster a greater understanding of fear in our society to create a fear literacy, if you will. This involves teaching people about the role and importance of fear in our lives, as well as providing them with the tools to better understand, manage, and respond to those fears. A fear-literate society would be better equipped to handle challenges, navigate risks, and make more informed decisions. It would also promote greater mental health by reducing the stigma associated with fear and encouraging more open conversations about it. Harnessing Fear, Turning a Challenge into an Opportunity Fear, when properly harnessed, can be a powerful motivator and catalyst for personal growth. It can be the driving force that propels us out of our comfort zone and into the realm of new experiences and learning. Fear as a Motivator Firstly, fear can act as a motivator. When we are afraid, we are more likely to act, to change our circumstances to alleviate that fear. This can lead us to take steps that we might otherwise avoid, driving us to make positive changes in our lives. For example, the fear of poor health could push one to start exercising or adopting healthier eating habits. A study by Bauer in 1981 showed that fear could lead to increased motivation and efforts towards a goal when managed effectively. The key is to ensure that fear does not become overwhelming and paralyzing, but rather serves as a driving force for action. Fear is a catalyst for growth. Fear can also act as a catalyst for personal growth. It pushes us to face and overcome challenges, thereby developing resilience, self-confidence, and problem-solving skills. In other words, fear can act as a springboard, propelling us into situations that enable growth and development. A study by LaBelle, 2017, indicated that fear, when confronted and dealt with appropriately, can lead to significant personal growth, resilience, and increased self-efficacy. When we overcome our fears, we gain a sense of accomplishment, which in turn boosts our confidence and self-belief. Fear as a compass. Lastly, fear can act as a compass, pointing us toward areas in our life that need attention or improvement. When we feel fear, it's often a sign that we're venturing into unfamiliar territory. This can be an indication that we're pushing our boundaries and expanding our horizons. By paying attention to what scares us, we can identify areas of our life where we might need to focus our efforts for growth and development. 
Whether it's public speaking, taking on leadership roles, or facing personal insecurities, fear can guide us towards significant opportunities for personal development. In essence, fear can be a powerful ally when properly understood and harnessed. It's not about eradicating fear, but about learning how to use it to our advantage. By viewing fear not as an obstacle, but as a tool for motivation, growth, and self-discovery, we can turn a potential challenge into a significant opportunity. The Shadow Side of Fear, Avoidance, and Missed Opportunities While we've explored how fear can be used to our advantage, it's crucial to recognize its potential pitfalls. Fear, when misinterpreted or mishandled, can lead to avoidance behaviors and missed opportunities, particularly in the realm of relationships and life partnerships. Fear and avoidance. Fear, particularly when it's intense or unmanaged, leads to avoidance behaviors. People might retreat from situations that provoke fear, seeking safety in the familiar and the known. This response, while providing temporary relief, often prevents individuals from facing their fears and potentially leads to missed opportunities for growth or advancement. For instance, in the context of careers, a person might avoid applying for a higher position due to the fear of added responsibilities or possible failure, thereby missing an opportunity for professional growth. Lazarus, 1991. Fear and Relationships In the realm of relationships, fear has a particularly profound impact. Fear of vulnerability, rejection, or abandonment prevents individuals from pursuing or maintaining meaningful relationships, leading to a pattern of avoidance and ultimately, loneliness. Fear causes people to shy away from deep emotional connections as they are afraid of getting hurt or experiencing heartbreak. This results in them running away from the best thing that ever happened to them, be it monogamous or non-monogamous relationships. Mickey Lincer, Shaver, and Pereg, 2003. Fear also undermines existing relationships. Individuals sabotage their relationships out of fear, pushing their partners away to avoid potential pain or loss. This fear-based self-sabotage leads to the dissolution of would-be fulfilling and healthy relationships. Fear in life partnerships. When it comes to life partnerships, fear can pose a significant barrier. The fear of commitment or the perceived loss of independence often prevents individuals from entering into long-term partnerships, be they marriages or other forms of lifelong commitments. Stanley Rhodes and Witten, 2010. Fear leads people to back away from commitments that require vulnerability, trust, and long-term investment. These fears, while valid, prevent people from experiencing the deep connection, mutual growth, and shared joy that life partnerships often offer. When it comes to relationships, whether monogamous or not, excessive fear can hinder an individual's pursuit of true love and happiness. When fear takes the driver's seat, it can lead to settling for mediocrity, choosing what feels safe and comfortable over what would likely lead to greater fulfillment. Fear and settling for mediocrity. When we let our fears dictate our decisions, we can end up settling for less than we desire or deserve. This may manifest in our relationships as choosing partners who do not meet our needs, staying in unfulfilling relationships due to fear of being alone, or choosing to not engage in partnering at all, as may be the case with solo polyamory in which one has a fearful avoidance or other insecure attachment style and is simply hiding their fear behind a label. In a study by Spielman, McDonald, and Wilson, 2009, it was found that fear of being single can lead to settling for less in romantic relationships, including staying in unsatisfying relationships and dating individuals who fall short of one's standards. Of course, it's also important to do the math and have realistic expectations. Life is complicated, isn't it? Fear and the Pursuit of Happiness Likewise, unchecked fear can stand in the way of our pursuit of happiness. By prioritizing safety and comfort, we may miss out on the rich experiences and deep connections that contribute to our overall happiness and life satisfaction. This might involve avoiding challenging but potentially rewarding situations, not taking risks, or not pursuing our genuine interests and passions out of fear of failure or rejection. Research by Peterson, Park, and Seligman, 2005, suggests that engagement in challenging activities that stimulate growth, along with strong social connections, contribute significantly to life satisfaction and happiness. When fear prevents us from pursuing these, it hinders our overall happiness. While fear can serve as a protective mechanism and a tool for growth, 
It can also hinder progress and prevent fulfillment when not properly understood or managed. The key lies in recognizing our fears, understanding their origins, and learning to navigate them effectively so that fear serves as a guide rather than a barrier. Thus, while fear in moderate doses can protect us from harm and motivate us to grow, when it becomes excessive and unchecked, it can limit our potential for happiness and fulfillment, particularly in the realm of relationships. It's not about eliminating fear, but learning to navigate it effectively, to use it as a tool rather than allowing it to become a roadblock in our pursuit of happiness and fulfillment. Hypervigilance and paranoia echoes from past trauma. One significant aspect of fear we need to address is hypervigilance or paranoia, particularly when it arises from past trauma. This form of fear is highly disruptive, causing individuals to live in a constant state of alertness, even when there's no actual present threat. Understanding hypervigilance and paranoia. Hypervigilance is characterized by an enhanced state of sensory sensitivity, accompanied by an exaggerated intensity of these behaviors, whose purpose is to detect threats. Paranoia, on the other hand, involves intense anxious or fearful feelings and thoughts often related to persecution, threat, or conspiracy. Both can stem from past traumatic experiences and can lead individuals to perceive threats in situations where there are none, triggering unnecessary fear responses. Hall, 2007. This type of fear is particularly disruptive as it creates a cycle of fear and anxiety that is disconnected from the reality of the present situation. The Role of Past Trauma Past traumatic experiences leaves lasting imprints, leading to a heightened fear response. This is the brain's way of trying to protect the individual from repeating painful or harmful experiences. It becomes a learned response. The brain has learned to associate certain situations, places, or people with danger, and it triggers a fear response even when the danger is not actually present. Pittman and others, 2012. This type of fear response is particularly problematic as it is not reflective of the present situation, but is instead an echo of past experiences. This echo results in individuals living in a constant state of fear, seeing danger where there is none, and damaging their relationships, productivity, and overall quality of life. Managing and Distinguishing Trauma-Induced Fear Recognizing and managing trauma-induced fear is crucial. One must learn to distinguish between valid fears, those that signal present, real threats, and fears that are echoes of past traumas. This often involves therapeutic interventions such as cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, or eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, EMDR, which can help individuals process past traumas, reduce the intensity of fear responses, and develop healthier coping mechanisms. Cuker and others, 2010. It's not about ignoring this type of fear, but rather acknowledging it for what it is, a response to past, not present, danger. By distinguishing trauma-induced fear from valid fear, individuals can better manage their fear responses and reduce the disruptive impact of fear on their lives. In essence, while fear can serve as a crucial guide and protector, it's important to recognize when fear is serving us and when it's holding us back. Hypervigilance and paranoia stemming from past trauma represents a form of fear that can and will restrict an individual's life and happiness if not addressed and managed effectively. Remember, fear is not the enemy. It's a protective instinct, a guide, a signpost, and a teacher. The idea of a fearless individual is a myth, a potentially dangerous one. It's time we embrace fear as a natural, necessary, and even beneficial part of our lives. In the end, fear isn't something we should strive to eradicate. It's an important part of who we are as humans, a tool that has helped us survive and thrive throughout our history. The concept of the fearless individual is not only a fallacy, but potentially harmful. It propagates an unrealistic and potentially dangerous ideal, one that could put us at and others, one that could put us and others at risk. It's high time we demystified fear, acknowledging its value and learning how to harness it for our advantage. After all, it's not about being fearless, it's about being fear wise. That wraps up today's episode. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of the fascinating paradox that is fear. I hope you come away with a new perspective and a greater appreciation for this primal yet essential emotion.